and other than these two. There is also the word qar, used for both the monthly cycle and the purification in between it. Close quote. Imam Wafiq al-Din, in laying the foundations for Mujmal passages, is saying that Mujmal passages can sometimes be passages that have one, uh, two or more conceivable meanings. Two or more conceivable meanings. So the word al-ayn in Arabic, ayn, what Imam Muwafiq al-Din says, ayn can mean more than just the human eye when we look. Ayn in Arabic can mean a spring of water. Ayn can mean gold. And ayn can mean insight and perception as well. So if we read a passage and the word ayn appears in Arabic, we have to think this is a mujmal expression. We'll need other passages to explain. Shaykh al Islam Suleyman al Najdi, he warned us about taking mujmal expressions without cross referencing. He said, quote, If you had considered the expression very carefully, you would have known that you had interpreted the expression on other than its meaning. And it is indeed incredible that you have left the clear expression and went to a mujmal expression. Close quote. Shaykh al-Islam Suleyman al-Najdi rahimahullah, what he's bringing to our attention is that if someone leaves a clear passage and goes to a mujmal passage, without cross-referencing, that can be a problem. These are passages where we most certainly need to cross-reference. Otherwise, there will be problems. Imam ibn Badr al-Hanbali rahimahullah, he stated, the mujmal in the lexical sense is the expression yielding two possible ways that it could be held. This happens in nouns, like the word al-ayn, yielding a number of meanings, such as insight, a spring of water, and gold. And there is also the word al qar which can yield the meanings of the monthly cycle and the purity in between it. Close quote. We're going to talk about that, inshallah, uh, a little later. Now we want to kind of understand <coughs> examples of mujmal passages in the Qur'an. Examples of mujmal passages in Allah's revelation. These passages will help you in your endeavors, and I'm not going to answer them in this particular class, these mujmal expressions. I will answer them when we start to talk about the pitfalls in hermeneutics, and maybe by the time we get to that, you may have researched yourself and found the answers. But I'm not going to answer them in this particular class. I'm going to kind of leave them hanging to show you an example of how sometimes a mujmal passage, when we see it, it can, we can go astray if we don't seek to cross-reference problem. Here's an example of a mujmal passage. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, وَطَعَامُ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ حِلٌّ لَكُمْ وَطَعَامُكُمْ حِلٌّ لَكُمْ the food of the people of the book is lawful for you and yours for them. Surah Al-Ma'idah, the fifth surah, ayah five. By reading this ayah on its outward import, it would seem that when it says the food of the people of the book is lawful for you, it would seem that all food would be the case. It would seem that all food. So we go to McDonald's, buy a sausage McMuffin. <laughs> Someone says, brother, what are you doing? Or sister, what are you doing? And we say, well, look, here's the ayah. Surah Al-Ma'idah, ayah 5. They're Ahlul Kitab. Eat it. Brother, there's pork in that. Brother, it says they're people of the book. Their food's halal for us and ours for them. So this is just an exception to the rule, brother. Wait a minute, hold on. Could that passage possibly mean something else? Brother, don't. Deny the Qur'an. <laughs> no, I've seen this happen. Brother, are you playing with the revelation? No, not at all. But I'm saying that there's got to be more to it than this. So he goes to the Jewish Saturday service in which they serve wine for the Sabbath. And the cup gets to him and he takes a healthy swig. Bismillah. <laughs> and he drinks it. Someone says, wait a minute, hold on. Brother, you can't do that. And he quotes the ayah. So the ayah Their food is permissible for us. 
But brother, that's not talking about that. What does the ayah say, brother? What does the Quran told us? Well, it says this. Well, there we are. Do you believe in Allah's book or not? I do, but th there's something wrong that I, I think need, we need research. And that's one of the main reasons how prophets come. Here is another example. حُرِّمَتْ عَلِيكُمْ أُمَّهَاتُكُمْ Your mothers have been made haram and forbidden for you. Surah An-Nisa, the fourth surah, ayah 23. Now you read this passage on its outward import, you think, subhanAllah, I can't go home tonight. I can't speak to my mother. I can't have nothing to do with her. And so your mother comes, yes, I come to visit. No, get back, mom, get back, mom, get back. I'm not supposed to be talking to you. You've been made haram for me. You've been made haram. Or maybe some people would interpret it, I can't be nice to my mother. Some people would like that. So it gives them an excuse to not be nice to their mother. Or to not call them. Well, this ayah means you're not supposed to call. It's haram for you to call your mother. Alhamdulillah, I don't have to call her. Stop calling. So this is an example of a passage that if it's just taken on its outward import, you can go astray. We need other passages that would help to put the full set of themes in perspective. Because we have one theme here, but Mujmel is a series of themes. We need to put all those themes together so they have a clear and understandable point and a conclusion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says further, as a third example of this, He says, and divorced women shall wait for a period of, of three quru. Three. I've made a typo. I put twelve instead of three, but it's three. Three quru. Surah Baqarah, the second surah, ayah 228. Now this word quru or qar, the singular meaning qar, can have two meanings. Now we spoke about this last summer in the four week course where the word qar has divided the schools of fiqh down two lines. One group, the Hanafis and the Hanbalis say that qar means that she has to wait the actual three, pure, the three times of purity in between each menstrual cycle. So if a woman has divorce pronounced upon her or the divorce is taking place, she has one menstrual cycle, a period of period, a, a period, a time of purity, which is counted as one qara. Then she has another menstrual cycle and another point of purity, two. And then another one and then another period of purity, three. The Shafi'is and the Malikis don't see it that way. They see that to mean the actual monthly cycle itself. So when that monthly cycle appears, one divorce has occurred. Now this word qar is a mujmal expression. So you say, well, why don't you just go to the Arabic language and find out? They did. They went to the Bedouins and they said qar. Because they're the ones that know the language. And still today, people when they write dictionaries, proper dictionaries, it's the ancient Bedouin, speak, uh, Arabic speaking Bedouins that they go to to find out about the expressions of words, how they're properly used. Because most of the Bedouins are far away from the city, and so their Arabic is of a pure nature. So they went to the Bedouins and they said, Al Qar, Hal Huwa Fahr, Hal Huwa Tuhr, Wa Hayy. They said, It is either, they said to the Bedouins, the actual word Qar, it is either purity, the purity in between the cycle, or the cycle itself. The Bedouins shook his head and one of them said, al He said that the word Qar is the cycle and the purity. It's both. And of course, everyone there was stunned because they said, well, we attempted to solve one problem and created three more. So the Mujmal expression and the Hadith, there are Hadith that indicate both. So we can't be fanatical. You get people that come with a new type of Qur'an and Sunnah where everything has to be one way. 
And so they say, no, it means this. Well, what about the people who do that? Was it's nullified. So you're telling me some of the Sahabiyat women and Sahabiyat men got married when they weren't truly uh, finished being divorced? And they committed adultery? Is that what you're telling us? These are mujmal expressions. So we accept them either way. We accept both of them. Because some mujmal expressions, this is an example of a mujmal expression where both are correct. Both are correct. And it's not a situation where you can go and say, well, this has to be uh, this way. Even when you cross-reference and everything else, you still get two. This is one of the examples. You still get two. So if a Hanbali and a Hanafi are married and a divorce happens, well, alhamdulillah, it'll be fairly easy and everything will be fine. But if a Shafi'i and a Hanafi get married and then a divorce happens, well, we're going to need to figure out a way. Because now there's going to be some cross method difficulties. Nothing impossible, just difficulties. They'll get sorted out. <coughs> now, the word for qarab, as I mentioned, has two meanings. Imam Muwaith al Din rahimahullah, said that the word qarab is used for both the monthly cycle and the purification in between it, the tuhur. It's used for both. Imam ibn Badran said the same thing. He said the same thing. I'll give three last examples of mujmal ayat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ghashia, the 88th Surah, Ayah 5, Tusqa min aynan aniyah, and they will be given a taste, a drink from a boiling ayn. A boiling ayn. Now ayn, in this passage, when we open up our Qur'ans in English, we see it's been translated spring. But if we look at the passage in its actual Arabic, just imagine that we were just looking at the pure Arabic. We didn't have it interpreted for us in English. We'd have to think, okay, we're going to need to cross-reference to find out, is it saying they're going to be given a drink from a boiling spring, from a boiling pot, boiling gold, <coughs> because gold can be boiled. They'll be given a drink of boiling gold, all right, and other passages say that if they have the drink, it will uh, burn their insides. So could that be boiling gold? Could it be? We're going to have. We're going to have to cross reference and say, okay, I want to look up all passages that have this word ayin or spring, and we cross reference and we'll find out the point, the bottom line. It has the same thing. ثُمَّ لَتَرَوُنَّهَا عَيْنَ الْيَقِينِ and you will see it with the certainty of the ayin. Now this is an even more mujmal passage because. And you will see it. What is it? And the certainty of the eye. The certainty of what? The inner insight? The looking of the eye? Or the spring? Or the gold? What's exact certainty? Of what? So these are ayat that require cross-referencing. You'll need to exercise your skill of cross-referencing. The final one, which is a favorite Mujmal passage that has been taken out of context down the ages, <laughs> so marry women of your choice. Two and three and four. Surah so Nisa, the fourth surah, ayah three. Now on its outward, it could appear that it's okay to marry women in groups of two, three, and four. So a man says, all right, on Tuesday I'll marry two. Thursday I'll marry three. Friday I'll marry four on its outward import, because this is a mujmal passage. So how do we know that the passage is saying two, three, or four, and that the wow before the word ruba'a, the wow before the word ruba'a, before the word four, how do we know that that means or and not and? How do we know from other passages, cross-referencing in Quran and Hadith, as well as historical precedent, that that ayah stands on its place in that way. Inshallah, we will answer these questions in later lessons when we talk about pitfalls and hermeneutics, but inshallah, I will leave that to you to research in your personal time if you decide to do so before then. And inshallah, as I said, rest assured that we will answer it. What I would like to do now is, I think this is goes up there with the difficulty uh, some of the difficulty in the Mutashabi hat when we talk, spoke about those passages. So perhaps I could field some questions or comments.